Good evening and welcome to Ask the Experts. My name is Grace Farrell. Now tomorrow, students up and down the country are gonna be getting their A-level results. So it's a big, big day. So I'm being joined this evening by Paul Ellett from Witch University and Neil Hammond from the National Careers Service. So we're gonna be talking all about results day. We're gonna be taking your questions, anything you'd like to know about tomorrow. We'll be talking about how to prepare mentally, um, how you actually get your results, and of course, um, how clearing works. So do feel free to get in touch at any point during this show, simply comment on the stream with your question and I'll put them to Paul and Neil. We'll try and get through as many as we possibly can. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. So let's start. Um, with a bit of advice, I know people are going to be so, so nervous. I remember being <coughs> so nervous. I don't think I slept the night Nothing before. Changes. No, no. It's all good. <laughs> no. Yeah. Now, if anything, I, I think there seems to be more pressure on students these days, possibly. Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. So I'm sure people are very, very stressed. Is there, any, is there anything that people can do to make the whole process as smooth and stress-free as possible? Yeah, so you can, um, so making sure that you've got things like your UCAS details um, saved. Um, things like your track login, you don't want to be resetting that at 7 a.m. in the morning. Um, when you get your UCAS clearing number on uh, track, if you do actually have to go through clearing, um, actually uh, being uh, actually writing that down. So for that, you need a pen and paper. So keep that handy. You're getting a lot of information on the day. Um, clearing phone numbers for your first insurance choices. So um, having those handy, as well as for your backup courses, um, this way you can sort of structure your clearing search. Um, and just having your phone charged or having a charger nearby, it's a very long day. So whether you're celebrating, taking selfies, or you're, you haven't got the grades you wanted and you need to start researching unis on the go and start calling universities, it's a long day, your battery will be drained quite quickly, you'll be quite surprised. Um, and just another like sort of soft tip, um, remember to eat and stay hydrated. Mm. Um, you'll be surprised um, how quickly the day can go. Um, if you don't feel, you know, if you feel very nervous at the start of the day, you probably don't want to have a breakfast. Mm. Um, by the time you get to school, get your results, um, come back home, it's late morning, midday, you haven't eaten properly. Um, and if you want, if you do need to go into clearing and start making key decisions, um, you, you don't want to be doing that low blood sugar, no. you know, these are key decisions. You don't want to keep being ratty, you need to keep energy levels up. So maybe, you know, keep some fruit around, snacks, things that are going to agree with you, basically. Yeah. So how do students actually get their results? Because there's a few different ways, is that right? Um, results, um, now, it probably depends on the institution you've attended. So a school might say, we will uh, hand out details of your results um, on the day, but of course, 
because on UCAS, you can go into UCAS track, you can go in and look at whether you've got an offer. So you might find that your first choice has been offered, mm -hmm. or you didn't get the first choice, you might find that you've got an insurance offer, which is the second choice. If you haven't got either of those, then really you're looking at uh, then going into clearing and getting help. Um, hopefully first and foremost uh, in your school or college um, where there may be a careers advisor who can help you. Mm -hmm. But um, there are other sources of help. Um, and for me, with the National Career Service, we have um, an examinations advice service. 0800 100 900. I always remember that one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and you can start talking to them as well. So what time um, can you start checking track? It's quite early, isn't it? Well, that's a bit of deliberation. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it, we, we deliberated about yeah. that. I think um, you could potentially look at it at around about 6 a.m. However, I don't necessarily think that would happen in reality mm -hmm. because what happens is everyone starts doing that and there's technical problems at the other end. So yeah. um, I think when they can manage it at the UCAS end, uh, they start opening up their system and then let you look mm -hmm. at what's happened on track. Right. And I suppose the other benefit of actually going into your school and talking to your teachers is that they know you, they can discuss your results with you. Yeah. Um, and from a reset and retake perspective, they're the best ones to talk to and they can actually action that as well. Yeah, I think it's really fundamental. They've known you for two years or possibly longer. and. Um, you need to be able to go and talk to the teachers. You all have everyone has favourite teachers. Mm. That's always the reality, isn't yeah. it? And you know, there's someone who will sit down and listen to you. That's really important. Go and talk to them. Yeah. But then, hopefully, you've got other people in school or, or college who can give you some help as well and give you up-to-date information. Uh, I'm not saying that every school is in the same position. When I was working in a college in Croydon, we had I was the careers advisor, but um, and I was always there on results day. But uh, there may be a different approach, and you may find it's just the head teacher or mm -hmm. senior teachers who give out the results. And plus, your friends will be there. Yeah. As well. well, I was going to say, I remember yeah. it's it's a really nice social event actually going in to get your results because you're you're about everyone's sort of finished school, haven't they? And you yeah. don't you're not going to keep in touch with all of those people that were in your year. So it's one of the last times yep. that you can actually see yeah. all your friends. It's it's moving forward time. Yeah. Yeah, 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 big yeah. time. So um, we've actually got one student's experience on video. His name is Jack Ben Edwards, and he, he did a little vlog for us about how he survived Results Day. So we're going to give that a little watch now. To be totally honest with you, my preparation for Results Day was just totally freaking out. I completely prepared myself for the worst. Um, I got back from holiday actually the day before, um, but I spent the entire journey home just planning out my gap year, planning out the job that I was going to get, planning out how I was going to revise when I retook the exams. I just had convinced myself, I'd worked myself up to a point where I was convinced I was going to fail or not get into my university and so I went into results day feeling very, very negative. I'd almost accepted my fate and so no one was more surprised to find out that I got into university than I was. <laughs> results day is a very weird day, I think, because the build up is so much worse than the actual day. I remember waking up on the day and just thinking, right, I just want to know now. And so I opened my laptop, loaded up the results page and um, when I read my results, I remember just cursing under my breath. And it was a curse of like relief. I was just so pleased. Um, and my parents, who were anxiously waiting in the room next to mine, obviously heard me say this word, this profanity, and <laughs> were like, oh no, they were just expecting the absolute worst. So when I went into their room and told them that I'd actually got into university, there was just, everyone was crying, everyone was just so chuffed. So yeah, it turned out to be quite a good day. My advice would be don't panic. Everything happens for a reason. Things will work out. And there are always options. There are always alternatives. A lot of my friends who um, didn't get the grades and had to go through clearing ended up at universities that they absolutely adore. Um, I mean, my initial application to my top choice university was rejected way before results day. And so the university that I'd firmed wasn't necessarily my dream uni or my top choice. But now, a year later, when I look back, I can't imagine being anywhere else, and it turned out to be the perfect place for me. So I would say trust that things have a good way of working out, um, and you will be so happy wherever you end up. So yeah, trust, trust that everything will be okay.
Now, I think the nice thing about that video is that he says, regardless of what happens, everything is going to be OK. Because a lot rides on these results, don't they? Absolutely. But actually, whatever happens, you, you're going to be fine. Yeah. I think, yeah, the key is to sort of not stress. Um, so Jack actually mentions clearing in that video. So let's talk a little bit about clearing. Paul, what is clearing for people who don't know and, and who's eligible for it? So it's the official uh, UCAS process for those students who don't get the grades they need for their first or insurance choice. Um, if you've also applied after the application de uh, dates of June 30th or you've not received an offer that you're happy with, um, you can also apply through clearing. Um, it's a very popular choice nowadays, um, 67,000, I think, in that ballpark of um, uni acceptances last year came through clearing. So take comfort in the fact that you're not on your own, but don't dilly-dally because there might be someone after the place that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So how do you decide what courses to go for on clearing? Well, obviously, if you've spent uh, perhaps year 13 going through your choices and plans and giving advice and help, you would have probably thought, talked to your teachers about subjects you're good at. Um, hopefully you've had an insight on things that you don't necessarily do in school or college. Um, there are courses, for example, vocational courses in subjects like travel and tourism or engineering or health and social care, which might lead you in a particular direction, such as nursing or engineering. Mm. But um, Equally, it's if you're dissatisfied with making any of those choices and you want to rethink your ideas, I think it's worth uh, getting access to the uh, advice service and talking to them about the help you might need, thinking about the subject areas that you might want to do. Um, there is another side to this. Uh, it could be that you, want to, you might be wanting to rethink where you want to go, mm. um, whether you want to do perhaps an apprenticeship, which could equally include the chance to get higher education mm -hmm. or vocational training. And if you're set on your first or insurance choices, um, find out about similar courses that they offer that have uh, lower entry grades. Mm -hmm. um, these could be joint courses. Um, if you um, if you're set on that area of the country, if you really want to go to Manchester or Nottingham or Bristol, um, look at nearby universities that offer the same course, um, and also think about other universities that you uh, added in your top five UCAS choices, mm. possibly ones that made you an offer already that you rejected. You might have to go back with your tail between your legs, <laughs> but hopefully they'll have something. Yeah. So um, we've had questions coming in. If you do want to get involved, simply comment your questions um, on this video stream. Um, we've had a question from a parent. They've said, my son didn't get an offer from a course he had his heart set on, despite meeting the entry criteria. Last week, I looked on the clearing section of the uni and the course isn't listed as having vacancies. If my son does better than expected tomorrow, is there any point in ringing the uni or does this mean there's no chance? I, I wouldn't say there's no chance. I think there's no harm in finding out mm -hmm. what the situation is. It can be a bit of a moving feast in some respects because um, students are making choices. I suspect not everyone confirms their choices on the same day. Now, they might have been offered things. They might have changed their mind. So there might still be the opportunity to do something. Um, but I'd be realistic. I suspect you will probably be told there's no option. Mm. Uh, you need to think about sort of perhaps an alternative uh, course, maybe an alternative university. Yeah. Uh, we've had a question from Brendan. He's asked, is clearing applicable if you're looking for a deferred place for 2019 to 20? Um, I've got an offer for that year, but I'm not clear what my options are if I don't meet my grades. Paul, do you know? So uh, clearing is pro is a priority for those who are actually applying now. Yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. you can uh, ring up a university um, and find out about, about deferred place for next year. Um, I would say be upfront from the very start that you're looking to defer and it's for next year, just so everyone's on the same page. Yeah. Um, and if you are going to be deferring uh, till next year, um, they'll probably ask you why you're going to defer mm. and what your plans are. So make sure you have got a plan for the year ahead. Um, that could be uh, getting a part-time job, um, that could be traveling, volunteering, yeah. um, but try to use that year to build up your application for next year or make you a better student or applicants. Yes, I think there's great value in doing something that adds extra qualities to your application. Mm. So experience is a very good thing, um, volunteering, uh, 
volunteering, the you know, lovely thing would be, if, you know, I want to volunteer and go and work in Africa. Mm -hmm. Well, I think a lot of people would love to do that and yeah. get some great experience from that. But actually volunteering could be working for a charity close to where you live. Mm. Mm. Uh, and it could be working with particular groups of people. So it could be obviously children or uh, uh, vulnerable adults or something of that nature. It's great experience. And even if you hadn't thought about working with those sort of young people or older people, uh, it might add something to your thinking and your planning. Mm. Thank you. So we've had another question from a parent. Um, they've said, my child has applied to study medicine. What options does he have if he doesn't get the three A's that he needs? Is it worth him ringing the university to see if they'll still take him? And can he go through clearing to study something else possibly? Right, traditionally with medicine, um, they want strictly stri stick strictly to the grades that they've asked you yeah. to get. So you obviously have done your biology, you've done um, chemistry, and probably another science or math, numerate subject like mm -hmm. maths. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be one of those. It could be a creative subject or an art subject. Um, what you need to think about is if you're going, um, not going, if you haven't met the grades could you get an alternative? And there are alternatives. So for example, uh, you might have applied to a medical school that also runs say, uh, a biomedical science degree. Mm -hmm. Now that, that basically is the first stage of, it's equivalent to a, a first medical degree. Right. So you, you're studying the same uh, topics, physiology, anatomy, etc. Right. Uh, and you could use that as a way forward. And then after that course, assuming you've done well and got good grades, they always want people to work hard. Medicine, you know, let's face it, we want doctors to be excellent at what they do. So it's academic achievement, it's part of that process. Um, beyond um, the, the first degree, you could then uh, try and apply, find out about applying for the postgraduate stage in your medical training. Mm -hmm. So you can end up getting your medical bachelor's and that eventually will lead for you to get to the stage of applying to become a registered doctor. Right. So there are options if you there don't are get options. your I three think A's. There's two things it's worth bearing in mind. There are probably a lot more applicants this year. So one of the interesting things I've noticed is um, certainly last year there was even a few vacancies on clearing. Really? Mm. For, for medicine? Yeah. And that's Which the first unusual. time you'd seen that? Yeah. Mm. Would you say that um, if you were to s be switching from one subject to another, even if they were quite similar, would that be a typical clearing call question that you might get? Why are you switching from here to here? Yeah, I think you need to be very clear about if, if you're switching subjects of any kind, mm. you need to think about the reasoning behind it. That's what the university would want to hear. So, for mm. example, that they're hearing that you've rethought your ideas because you've examined or researched it a bit more detail and you've learned a bit more well, something that's newer and that's actually interested you that's probably a good thing mm. so do your research about the course absolutely right yeah so alison has asked um if my daughter has to go through clearing and gets an offer she'd like to accept is she able to find out whether accommodation is available before accepting the offer or does she have to formally accept first Oh, I'm not sure about that. Um, yeah. Accommodation is an interesting issue. Um, it is, I think, for a number of a lot of universities, problematic. What I would automatically do is um, talk to the university to see if they've got um, issue, uh, what sort of help that they can give her on accommodation. Right. Um, now it might not be that it might be that you don't get um, your own little place. You might have to go and live with a family or something mm -hmm. of that nature. Mm -hmm. Um, so you need to examine that carefully. Um, first time away from home for a lot of young people, I think is not traumatic, it's, it's a new experience. So you want it to be a happy experience. So yeah. it's better to be uh, in an environment where you are um, happy, you feel safe, etc. Yeah, of course. And, and that's next year you might do something different. Yeah. yeah. And that sounds like one of those calls that could go on a bit. And you know, we were saying earlier, keep your phone charged. Yeah. Um, phone calls <laughs> can take a bit of time, so um, yeah. yeah. Yes. But to come out to the clearing, I, you know, if that's the right course for you, 
and you really want to do that, and you like the university, and hopefully you've been and seen that university. Because mm, mm. I think that's an important part of it. Go and have a look yeah. uh, and make sure that you've made the right choice. And like a lot of these questions, um, you're not going to be the only one in this boat. Mm -hmm. um, the housing office at the university will be able to put you in touch with students who are in that same boat, mm -hmm. who you could possibly rent with in town if there, isn't, um, if there aren't any places and halls left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um, so do check out the Witch University website, by the way. Um, we've got loads of guides, loads of results day tips, um, and how to sort of pick university courses and how to work out budgets. Um, so we're going to take questions now. If you do want to ask anything, just, just ask away. Just simply comment with your questions. Um, so we have a question from Ruth. She said, what should we do if my son wants to apply for a different course next year? He's already applied this year, but wants to start next year instead and apply for a different course. Mm. Do we just turn down this year's offers if he gets them and just start again? In theory, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean you need to, I think, seek some advice. So, for example, if the change is kind of a dramatic change from, say, science to arts, yeah, that's there's obviously quite good reasoning behind that, but you need to explain that. Um, if you don't, you don't want to continue with a particular course for some reason, um, you need to get yourself released from that, uh, so that you, you know, you've, that will basically lead you to applying for the next year's UCAS intake. Right, and how do you get yourself released from a course? They university? should agree with that probably over the phone. Right, uh, they will uh, probably confirm on track. Uh -huh. okay. So that's a tip for students who are applying next year when you're choosing your first and insurance choices take them seriously yeah. because you mm. are committing to go to that university or to those universities. Yeah. Well we had, had a question from Helena she said what if you've decided that you've made the wrong insurance choice? <laughs> <laughs> if it's wrong obviously no. I would be my I think the strategy would be to be honest about it, it was wrong, why was it wrong, we'll mm. say why it was wrong and um, you know everyone has expectations based around what they hoped they were going to do mm. and maybe it's not the right program and it, you can't go on to a program that's the wrong course, it's not leading you in the direction you want to get. Having said that this is why it's really important to get some really good solid advice um, yeah. As I say, you've got the advice service that we run for the National Career Service. If there's an issue about um, um, clearing or um, issues with UCAS, you can talk to UCAS. Um, then hopefully there will be people in school or college you can talk to as well. Yeah. Uh, another question from a parent. She's asked, um, do universities know the A-level results in advance? And if so, how far in advance do they know? So I believe they know them a few days in advance. Right. Yes. But of course, they're not allowed to say, say what they are. Yeah. <laughs> the process is normally they need to know how many bodies they've got coming to them. Right, OK. So they do need to have that information. They also have to work out if there's going to be courses they're going to have to put information out on clearing. Hmm. I did think it was very, very quick work to be able to put yeah. all the vacancies out on clearing if you've just found out the results the same day as everyone else. So, so you may that find sense. that on track, um, you may, uh, your decision is still pending on mm -hmm. the day itself. Mm. Um, so in that case, um, you know, keep an eye on it or get in touch with the university directly, try to rattle an answer from them directly. I think one of the, I mean, I've certainly had situations where I've helped students who were they were in the pending situation, mm -hmm. and um, that that can be quite disruptive because that means you're not sure if you're going to university or if it's the university you thought you were going to go to. Yeah. So you need uh, to get some idea of when you're likely to get a, uh, an answer. I would actually ask directly, when will I know? Just by ringing them. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's the first thing. The second thing I would do is consider, do I need to think about an alternative option? Right, mm. yeah. We've got time for a few more questions. Do keep them coming. Um, a question from Anne. She's asked, um, if you get your insurance choice, but not your first choice, and you want to investigate an adjustment upwards, do you have to release back your insurance choice before you can be considered by other universities? So firstly, should we talk about what adjustment is? Yes. OK, so it's, it's sort of like the opposite of clearing. So if you get higher grades than you were predicted, 
um, you can find a course with higher entry requirements that meet those grades. Um, there isn't an official list of vacancies for adjustments. It's not like clearing where you can go on the UCAS website and see live, um, live vacancies updated every hour. Um, you do have to contact the universities directly themselves and see what they've got to offer. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you should also note uh, that uh, when you're talking to a university in adjustments that you're um, you're clear that you're just gathering information at that stage, right? Um, and you don't, uh, you only accept an offer um, when you're 100 percent sure that that's yeah. the offer you want to take. You've got to be quite clear; it's the right thing for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's quite a challenging thing to do. Um, obviously, you've got to find out sort of simple factors like I'm going to apply for a better course in your mind. Mm. Um, you may have done the research and you're happy with that, but make sure you have done the research. Um, I would talk to the university, f uh, find out about vacancies, whether they've got enough spaces to be able to offer you something. Right. Um, they may have taken up all the students that have they made offers to. Mm. Yeah. Uh, a question from Siobhan. Um, she's asked, what are common questions that might come up in a clearing call? And what should you look up about a course before making a clearing call? Um, so if you do go on, if you do have a clearing call, um, it could be a quick confirmation of your grades. It could be a mini interview. Um, in that sense, uh, think back to any interviews that you already had and what kinds of questions you had then. Um, basic things like, why do you want to study this course here? Um, keep in mind that you know if a course has the same name at one uni, even if it has the same name at another uni, it's it's not necessarily the same course. Mm. Mm. I think the other interesting thing is some courses are clearly linked to areas of employment. So, for example, mm -hmm. a lot of people are always interested in applying for degrees in subjects like accounting mm -hmm. or... Mm. Uh, I, I would be quite clear about why I was interested in those as careers as well. Right. Because you'll probably find yourself being taught by people who've been professional lawyers or uh, barristers or, or accountants. Mm. Yeah. And that graduate information is available on stu on universities' websites. Okay. Um, so maybe there's uh, case studies on their website or actual examples that you can give um, when you're asked about why you want to study at that university. Mm. And I guess you should um, re-familiarise yourself with your personal statement as well. You may That's even right. have to rewrite it. Oh, really? Yes, oh. it's possible that they might want you to just draft and send in a, a newer version because if it's a different course mm. or a different type of programme, you might need to think through clearly why, why you're doing that and why you want to apply. Mm. But yeah, dig out your personal statement tonight, have a read of it, um, because a university in clearing will be looking at that as um, they'll be able to see it and that'll be the, that could be the basis of an interview um, that you go through. Um, but it's also quite useful to just refresh your memory of why you picked um, that course in particular, or that, that original choice, and just put you back in that mind space from 12 months ago, nine mm. months ago. Mm. Mm. It is a long time ago, isn't it, yeah. that you write them? Uh, you are watching Ask the Experts. It's a results day special because, of course, it is results day tomorrow. So keep your questions coming through. Uh, we've got Paul Ellett from Witch University and Neil Hammond from the National Career Service. Uh, time for a few more. This is from Sasha. Uh, she needs advice on whether it's OK to look at other unis in clearing while still hanging on to insurance choice. I think you can certainly look at other courses. Mm. Um, when you've got to a point of deciding which is the course you want to go for, it could be your insurance choice, but equally it could obviously be something else, then you've got to go through the process of contacting the university that uh, you don't now want to go to and you want to get a new place and explain, you know, that you, and there may be quite valid reasons why you want to make a different choice, so explain that. Mm -hmm. um, but they will hopefully then release you from that uh, choice and then you go then to the other university and say, I can now come and join your course. Right. So something from Joseph. Um, he's asked, can you defer a clearing place? Oh, I'm not sure. Defer a clearing place? Well, as we said earlier, clearing is... Uh, that's yeah. it's all current, isn't it? Yeah, um, clearing is primarily for those applying this year. If you can imagine that there's, if you're thinking of deferring to next year, Meanwhile, there's currently thousands of students who are looking for a place for September. Yeah. Um, so as we said earlier, be upfront when you're talking to a university that you're looking to defer. Yeah. Um, it's really on a uni by uni basis, I feel. If you're suddenly making 
uh, choice is differing, and there's a reason for it. Um, we obviously need to explain that. Mm -hmm. um, usually, um, website, university websites, or prospectuses, or other information like that, may have indicated the uh, university's attitude to deferment mm -hmm. and w what they accept as deferment. Some courses might not even accept that. Right. So I suppose if you if you were going to be going to uni this year, you find out you didn't get the grades you wanted, and also that you'd like to take a gap year and defer, mm. would you still go through clearing? Or would you kind of do that again next year? I think really you'd be looking at reapplying for next right. year, most, most likely option now. Right. But having that year in between to reapply again, um, you know, it can be difficult to see your friends going off to university this year. Yeah. Um, but try to think long term. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Don't rush into a decision just to be able to say you're going to university. Yeah. Think long term. Mm. Um, you know, making the right decision will pay off big in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. Right, we've not got much time. I'll just try and whiz through a few last questions. Um, this is from Ariel. Uh, how quick will the first choice university confirm the place for a student who meets the grade requirement? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've, hopefully it will be done fairly rapidly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you may have to um, agree that you will a time that you will get to know about what, what, what's actually happening. Right. Um, uh, it's a pretty hectic time, not just for individuals who are applying to university, but universities themselves mm. are managing quite a big process. You've got to bear that in mind. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, even if it doesn't happen on the same day, it might take a couple of days, um, if the university said, well, we will talk to you on next Monday, mm. or something like that, mm. that's probably okay. Okay. Yeah, find out when you need to uh, let a university know by. Um, this weekend, universities will be hosting special open days for students possibly coming in through clearing. Mm -hmm. So if you can get to mm. one of those, definitely visit in person. We always recommend doing that. Um, so basically block out this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Uh, final question um, from Chris. What happens if, I think, that's, I think this is about um, their son or daughter, what happens if they miss the grades for an unconditional offer? Ooh, unconditional. There's a lot of unconditional offers happening at the moment. About 23%. percent so really? Yeah, it's a large number. Of got one. Yeah. Right. Um, my, I'm not sure about my view on that, really. I feel like if it's unconditional, in theory, it's you should still be able to get in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's Are unconditional. I mean, yeah. It's, it, un it's unconditional, so yeah. you know you've got a place. Yeah. Yeah. Kay. But just keep in mind that those. A level grades will stick with you for the rest of your life, or at least yeah, the glute. Yeah, so no don't pressure. Yeah, no <laughs> pressure. So hopefully, no one took their foot off the pedal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, a question from Jeanette: How likely is a halls of residence place for an insurance choice if the first choice is unsuccessful? I feel like it. I feel like it depends on the uni and what right. halls it really they have. It probably does depend yeah. on the uni. Um, you know, I think universities. There's been a lot of universities building up their uh, capacity with um, space for for flats, student flats, etc., um, and other accommodation. Um, I, I'm pretty sure many universities are well adjusted to this time of year. They know there's going to be new people that haven't yet applied. Mm. So what you really need to do is just check out to see what the vacancy opportunities are right. and what type of accommodation. Yeah, but speak to the housing office. They've been through this every year for the past how many years. Yeah. Um, they'll be able to help. They've they seen know it all lots before. about it, don't They've they? seen it all before. Yeah. 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 Um, this question from Susan, very quickly. Um, what if I want to appeal a grade if I've been unfairly marked? Um, well, that's another reason to actually go into school and collect your results. Right. Your teachers, careers advisors, those on hand will be the best one serves to advise you? I think most likely the it would be a decision made by a school or a college yeah. okay. as to whether that grade is worth appealing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, the, it's teachers who will be the best people to seek advice on that. Okay. Final question. Uh, sorry, so many questions have been coming and we're trying to get through as Keep many as we question. can. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, this is from Jerry. They've asked, are there alternatives to uni if, if they don't want to go? Yes, I mean certainly if you've got to a point where perhaps university is not a choice that you want to follow now, um, 
and you could certainly look at the apprenticeship opportunity. Mm. Now, apprenticeships is essentially a job. Yeah. But it's got a training and, and learning built in to the programme. So, for example, I've worked with a young man who, when I first met him in school in East London, he said, well, I, we were running a construction day, and he came up to me at, at break time and said, it's really interesting, but actually I want to be a building surveyor, mm -hmm. and I don't want to go to university. Right. And I said, well, actually, you do need to get a degree because you eventually will need to become a member of the Royal Institute, Institute of Chartered Surveyors. Mm. So you, that's a one part, but there is a way through it. And the degree apprenticeship route is a great opportunity, and this is what he eventually got, I helped him get on to do. And um, he's now training, um, I think he, at some point this year or next year, will become have his degree, Bachelor of Science degree in building surveying. Really? And he's done an apprenticeship. So yeah. it's the degree apprenticeship route. It's, uh, it's increasingly a good opportunity. Mm. Surveying, law, um, uh, areas like engineering, technology. Banking. Nursing. Yeah, nursing. Really? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and of course you're earning while you're learning as well, so you exactly. won't be in as much debt. And you get that debt. real uh, company or real workplace experience that you won't get um, if you go down the uh, traditional university route. When you come out of university, you're kind of starting from scratch, whereas if you go down that degree apprenticeship route, you're getting the best of both worlds, but you're also learning about what, a, uh, what an actual workplace is like, mm. and you're picking up a whole other range of skills, basically. Well, some, some courses will have an industrial year or a placement year. That's true. Yeah, yeah. and uh, depending on the course, whether it's a technical course, an engineering course, or a business course, you might spend yourself uh, a year, perhaps your third year out working in a real work environment. Mm. And those would be for courses. I mean, I've certainly met students. Uh, I was recently in a hotel, and uh, they some students from, I forgot which university it was, but they were doing BSCs in hospitality and catering. Okay. And they were doing their placement year. So lots of options out there. Well, that is all we've got time for. Thank you so much, Paul and Neil. It's been lovely Thank having you, you on. Thank you to everyone who's been watching and everyone who got involved with questions. If you are a student and you're getting your results tomorrow, we really wish you the yeah, best, best of luck. Good luck. Don't worry, it's all going to be fine. <laughs> um, do join us in two weeks for another chance to ask the experts. We're going to have the Witch Money team in the studio to discuss their recent credit report investigation, which is definitely not one to be missed. Thank you for watching and have a great week. <laughs>